a lot of great quotes in this episode too. I mean, as you see, we keep we keep quoting them, but episodes with Cardassians are all, always going to have great quotes. Right. One of them was uh, uh, Garrick who says, "I believe in coincidences. Coincidences happen every day, but I don't trust coincidences." Nice, yeah, yeah, it's solid. And another and solid delivered well, you know. Yeah, I don't know. There probably is, but just Book of Cardassian sayings because they always have these kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. uh, almost like the Ferengi have their rules. Cardassians have their own like set of yeah, sayings that's really or parables. There should be a really good. There should be a, a book of like great Cardassian quotes. You're right. Yeah, I wonder if uh, there is one. I'm almost sure there is. <laughs> you know, I remember the the. I haven't read many of the Star Trek books and none of the comics, but by far the best Cardassian, or sorry, the best Star Trek book I read was one called A Stitch in Time, which was actually written by Andy Robinson. And mm. it was about uh, Cardassians. Like the first half of the book was about growing up as a Cardassian and there's Gul Dukat in there. And it, it shows like the hierarchy of how they develop and the kids develop and, and grow into military people. And the second half was what happened with Cardassia after, you know, Deep Space Nine ends and the Dominion completely ravages Cardassia. Um, Garrick goes back to his home world finally because he's no longer in exile because it's been destroyed and, and he helps to put back the pieces of his, of his planet. Um, really well written and it really gives you a lot of insights about Cardassians and written by... Andy Robinson, which was really cool. Oh, wow. I didn't know. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So he goes into pretty good detail about Cardassian life. and mm -hmm. About about like growing up. You know, growing up. Growing up to be a Cardassian military or just how Cardassian schools are that they, they, they raise you in like a number system. I think it's something like 11 kids per group. And you're basically just numbered by how good you are, you know, in these militant things, how, you know, and smart and strength and, and whatever. And he started off as an 11 or 13 or 12 or whatever was the last one. And mm -hmm. Ducat was like a one or something like that. You know, it's just oh. know how you really, so they've been like, they've been like adversaries and, and uh, opponents since childhood. Oh, that's a lot of backstory for, mm -hmm. for what we ended up seeing on screen, which is that tension that, unspoken tension between the two characters totally yeah and marco limo too by the way does a fantastic job in the documentary i thought he was hilarious he mentions that uh you know he wished that people had told him that how much they liked his character yeah that was shocking and this i and i so good yeah I, I thought it should be pretty much a given but um, it's funny how in life sometimes you just got to say things that are that you think are obvious, you know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you got to tell somebody you love them, even though it's pretty obvious that you love them, right? Yeah. Just, or just as them, a reminder, yeah. or hate them, you know. Just let them as a, remind them. As By a the reminder. Way, I, don't, I don't like you still. I don't like you, so I'm not the one to play with. <laughs> don't come to me with that. But it's shocking that Mark Alimo did such a good job and did such great performances without any feedback or any positive reinforcement or anybody saying hey you're doing a great job keep doing that or add this like he was just basically guessing the whole way and nobody ever said by the way you're killing it you're crushing it 